Okay, well, um, welcome to our Tuesday 9 a.m. breakthrough game Q&A. So excited you guys are all here. We're gonna have more people be coming on as we go. But I have some goodies I wanted to share. Kole was saying that um, she was tired of the roller coaster and I'm like, yeah, that's not going away. <laughs> <laughs> but I have learned some tricks. So I'm gonna start out by giving this nugget before we jump into um, talking about the game and talking about the, um, the breakthroughs that you need to have. So here's the thing. When, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this telling you a story. Um, I actually had a new layer of understanding of this come to me at the event I went to last week. Everybody knows I spent four days at an immersive breakthrough financial empowerment event. And at this event, the guy tells the story. Now he used to be that reactionary punk that would complain about everything and be yelling and freaking out, you know, that hothead that we all go, oh my head, grow up. And so he has like history with coming to the point where he is super emotionally intelligent. And he said the other day, um, they had an experience where they were in a dune buggy. Okay. So dune buggy, he's in his dune buggy, show pictures of it. They're playing in the dune buggy. It's him and his wife and his friend and, and his wife. And, and they have this adventure and end up rolling the dune buggy and they're laying there upside down in the dune buggy, hanging from their, their seat belts. And, and you know, the dune buggy's crashed. I don't know if it's destroyed or whatever, but it was kind of a big deal. And usually those kind of situations trigger some pretty serious negative emotional responses, right? So he was using this story to illustrate that in the past he would have freaked out, but in this moment he had trained his mind to decide that when things like this happen, he laughs. And so he went, everybody okay? And then started laughing. That was hilarious, right? And um, it was an adventure and it was a story that they got to tell. And what I got out of that was my newest layer. Like I've trained myself to laugh when my kids do something that used to make me want to throttle them. And I just laugh and I'm like, okay, what's the experience we're having? And we have talk about it. So um, that means my kids and I have a really exceptionally good uh, relationship because they know they can trust me to not completely come, you know, come down on them when they have their experience. And so with this, the, the new layer for me was, okay, why, why are we getting triggered? Why would that have triggered him in the past? Well, the doom buggy is expensive, right? Now we have a ruined expensive thing. Um, you know, how could that have happened? It, it got in the way of our good time. Now we have an upside down doom buggy and we can't go play anymore. You know, what are all the reasons why the thing that's sending you on the roller coaster is sending you on the roller coaster. Yes. <clears throat> My son has a 1040 appointment this morning. And those are the, I'm going to mute her. Those are the breakthroughs. Those are the breakthroughs to have. Um, but the best way to have them is to just go, oh, that's actually kind of funny. And to just train yourself to have a positive emotional response to your experience. What do I get to get out of this? This is fun. What do I get to, to you know, this will be a fun story to tell because blah, 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 right? So um, anyway, that's a nugget to be thinking about. And I just want to welcome everybody. I'm really excited that you're all here. Um, are you all playing the game? Awesome. Okay, so go ahead and unmute. I'd like to hear everybody's thoughts. If you've read the whole game PDF, what is your favorite part? What are you excited about? What's your positive push forward? And what are you inspired by? All of this good stuff. That's what I want to hear right now. And I invite you to tell me. Anything, anything that you feel particularly triggered by? <laughs> anything that you feel particularly inspired by? Has anybody read the update with the goal talk? and the carrot and the stick. Mm -hmm. Okay, Pam, what are your thoughts about that? Um, <clears throat> that's, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> that's my first um, area that I would say, eh, don't know how to do that. Um, because 
you know, I, I know my goal is to, you know, earn the thousand dollars and I know that I'm going to take action with making videos and posting them that deeper step by step. I don't know. And to give myself a positive reward and a negative consequence and or, and or yeah. whatever motivates you is what's important. Okay. And so, you know, if there's more, I'm like, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> it's just as simple as that though. So you've already, you already know what you're saying, right? Cause you've done that piece. Right. Looking, so this particular, this game is a goal in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, that's actually part of the point. It shows you how to break it down so that you have daily action steps and a measurable. So you, it's measurable. You know, when you met it, mm -hmm. right? Um, for some people, they want, uh, they want to put a date on it. I don't do that. Um, because for me that, and for a lot of women, I think this, I, I don't notice this in men, but for a, while, a lot of women, I do notice this and I've noticed it for me. If I put a date on it, um, it, it adds undue stress to, to my system anyway. Okay. So if a date, if putting on a date works for you, then put on a date and push for it. Right. That's a, like manifest or energy, I think. But for me, I put whatever the measurable thing is. That's why I like Napoleon Hill taught to put a money, like a, the money is the measurement. If it's a money goal, you put the money number. And when you reach mm -hmm. that number, that's measurable. So you know, you reached the goal, right? Um, for some people, the, the goal that they set is about time. So then that would be the measuring stick. Did I do this in this amount of time? Because that was the goal, right? Take so a deadline. I, I mean, not my thing. So it's okay, you know, for me, but it might be for you. So if you're listening to this and setting a date works for you, there's nothing wrong with that. If it works for you, it's a motivation factor and a measuring stick. Okay. Um, so when you say, mm, I don't know about that with the goal piece and the carrot and the stick, tell me just a little bit more about what's, what feels like it's missing. If the whole thing is a goal, what feels like it's missing? Like you don't know what, how, what you have to add. If I've summarized, you know, the steps and there's nothing missing that you draw light to, then I guess I'm going. <laughs> You're doing it. You're doing it. And this isn't like, it takes 21 days to do it, to create a habit, but this is not a 21 day challenge. This is a game we're playing until we meet the measuring thing. Okay. So the measuring tool that we're using is that, that first thousand dollars mm -hmm. and it's just going to build up and you're going to put it away. And when your bank account says thousand dollars right here, then you know, you will have met it. And that's the day to celebrate meeting that. Okay. Um, you can make a 21 day challenge as part of your game so that you have content. That's okay. My game is not about 21 days. It's about you marketing your message and getting consistent, getting out there and, and not burying yourself somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, anybody else has, has anybody else read the game and has anything any confusion, anything happy or excited to tell about? What are you doing to play the game? Come on. Jasmine, you're playing the game a little differently. Do you want to share with those who are watching this video how you're doing it? Sure. So I because they're all completely separate things that I am doing it with. Mm -hmm. So I am also paying for some mentors. And in the process, um, I, with this game, I was like, okay, well, let's do this. What do I have to lose? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go live every day in every single one of these groups. And it can get a little bit stressful. Like I stressed out about it yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, but with each one, like, we, but I've done a video post and I'm doing accountability posts every single day for 21 days. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it will be the next accountability 
or, you know, different things like that. My I own a crafting business. And in that one, like I, I own a lot of supplies. I've put a lot of money into it. And so my goal was to bring money back in to pay for the things that I've already purchased. And so that was, that's the goal for that one. Mm-hmm. And if I'm make something little, a keychain, some earrings, a cup, you know, I've just been, Hey, come craft with me or, Hey, I'm taking these out of the molds. Come, come see it firsthand, you know, straight from the mold. So these people are that I'm doing in the process. And in that process, people are like, Oh, I want that. Oh, I want this. Oh, I want, you know, whereas before my business has been dead for eight months. So, okay. so, <laughs> so it works. There it is. Okay. <laughs> well, and it's the same thing. My, my mindful healing business, I, um, I've taught in here about the root chakra and I went in, I did a basic post, you know, a basic video about the root chakra. It's just like I've done with the throat chakra and I'm making accountability posts each day. Hey, come back here, come do this. And then I even post what I have done for the day. And because I'm posting it first thing in the morning, it's in my head and I, gotta, I do it in my day. So that's what I'm doing in that one. Mm-hmm. My nail business, we've got a new fall line launching. So I get in and I use the little silly, you know, glasses and hat that you can put on. And I'm like, hey guys, guess what? Guess what? Guess what? And I give like little hints and tips. I'm literally <laughs> on there maybe 30 seconds. But everybody's coming in. They're like, oh my gosh, Jasmine, you're so freaking hilarious. I love this. And so they keep coming back because they want to see what's going on. So I just let loose. I didn't think overthink it because that's usually what I do. I don't care what I look like because people want to see you for you. Mm. And, you know, I talked about my thumb and different things like that. My thumb's much better now because I changed my thoughts and opinions. Like I'm, I was teaching people doing different things. So it's been great. I, I loved it. Yay. Right there. I'm so happy. <laughs> Thank you. Well, and my thing is, is I'm that girl that I had to have the makeup. I had to have the perfect hair. If my nails were even slightly grown out, I would have to redo my nails. I would have to have the perfect, I mean, I literally had to have everything set up. And now I'm like, caution to the wind, let's go. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's kind of how I feel too, only I will tell you, I felt like I've had very specific things come to me about how to make sure I am on, I am energized at the beginning of my day, like my power hour, the order of my power hour got completely flipped around. And um, it's been a challenge for me because I like to be very relaxed and I like to just settle in and just like I could have my bed head all day. I'm not kidding. And be very, very content. But it keeps me from going like this. And so that would be always my excuse. So the thing that came to me to do in the morning was to get ready first. Don't do anything until I get ready first. And then um, read something that inspires me because that always inspires me or watch a video or something, something that inspires me with something that I want to say. Because when I get inspired, it comes out of my mouth and it just makes it so much easier to do the video. So if that helps anybody, and I hope it does, I like what you said, Jasmine, about just being like, caution to the wind, just whatever. <laughs> this is me. And, and I think that that's really the point of the game. Whatever you feel to say in the moment that you put the camera up is the right thing to say. What's coming to you via inspiration, it's the right thing to say. We do this, um, this exercise, and I like to do this one at my events too, where you pick a partner and they're a stranger. You don't know them. And you look into their eyes and you allow the thing that comes to you to come out of your mouth and say it to them in the moment. And it's words of life. It's like the greatness I see in you is this. I feel like that's exactly the energy that goes with making your videos every day. And they don't have to be long. I like that you said you do them for 30 seconds. I said five minutes because most people can get their heads around that. I never talk that short. Like, seriously, it's hard for me to keep it to 10 minutes. I have so much I want to say. But at 30 seconds, 
to play the game is a yes. So like, don't box yourself in. I was really clear about that in the, in the, um, in the instructions. Okay, I would love to hear who's inspired and what you feel like you need to do or if you need a breakthrough. I have written a little bit about it. It's interesting in the challenge, I put my own challenges on myself and I don't feel like they're a burden, but you know, for the ones that I shot yesterday that are for this week, my challenge was that I wanted to be able to do it in one clip, makes life easier. Mm -hmm. But I also wanted to go from the kitchen to outside just because I wanted to. <laughs> I got sick of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And so that was an interesting thing. I, I don't know if it's ideal because, you know, when I remove my camera from the little stand, it kind of clicks and I'm kind of clunking and holding my stuff. I need my iPad with me because those are my notes. So it's like, oh, but it was just stinging fun to put a new challenge for myself. Yeah. Just to ease your mind on that, I've seen people with like five, six, seven hundred thousand subscribers on their YouTube channel do exactly that. Okay. No editing. Good. They want to move around, they pick up their camera and move. Good. Totally fine. So look, they have a ton of subscribers who love them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Cause they're real. I think for me, that's what I have learned is that it's okay to be just who I am. Mm -hmm. And when I feel that, that I am ready to roll, just roll. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter where I'm at in the day or how ready I am or prepared I am. It'll roll right when I do it, feel that mm -hmm. it's time. Go get it done. Like Natalie will say, that gets pulling. For me, that's that's my time to, to get there. So mm -hmm. I think we need to learn that about ourselves. What What is it that tells us when it's the right minute? Mm -hmm. And then make sure that we're there, that we show up. We're consistent with ourselves. Not with everyone else's rules, not with what everyone else is doing, but with ourselves. Mm -hmm. So um, at the beginning with reference to human design, we thought I, I thought I was born at five o'clock at night. Turns out I was born at 927 at night. And that made a huge difference. I still have the splenic, um, inner authority, but it changed my strategy. And you know, I really judged it and I didn't realize it until this morning when I was pondering this. Um, manifester was what we thought it was, which is a push out energy, which I still can, I still feel that as like being kind of part of me in the right moments. I am a forward motion person, but the waiting for the invitation piece, um, I judged that. I thought it meant sit around waiting and that never felt good to me. That's I'm right. Not right. Natalie, <laughs> I, I was wrong. And I thought, because it's so like Natalie's Natalie tells me this all the time. It's an education and a reprogramming. And do you have anything you want to say about this? Yeah. So I, I found a huge block in myself this morning when I realized after I was as at that event, completely inspired, getting tons of stuff from above, and I wanted to push forward, and I, and I found myself going, but that's not who I am. Oh, well, yes it is, because in that moment, I want to move forward. And then I realized every single one of us is designed to move forward. It's just how we do it, and the moment we come to it, that looks a little differently. But every single one of us, when we know what we need to do, it's about going. It's about moving. It's about having, you know, creating and not waiting for life to happen to us, but being part of it. I have something to add as a projector. Okay. Okay. So there's some nuances and this is a re-education and 
it's waiting for the invitation, like as a projector, like, so waiting for the invitation can feel very stifling. Mm -hmm. um, and when projectors first learn about it, but the thing is, is that you're waiting for an invitation to, it's for the other, is that what you're waiting for the invitation for? So if you're creating a program, if you're creating services, if you're creating a new offer, those things need to be invited out of you. Like, hey, I want to, like, can you do this for me? I want to learn how to do this from you. That's, those are invitations. Yeah, we were talking about this the other day. I had somebody ask me, hey, do you teach people how to facilitate belief breakthrough? And I'm like, no, but I've been thinking about it. So now I've been invited. So then it's time to start rolling on creating something for that. Yes. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't get the inspiration of knowing that you're going to be facilitating these breakthrough sessions for other people and start creating your packages around it and start create and start forward momentum with that of like learning. But for a projector, it's learning because you want to learn first. Mm -hmm. It's for you. You don't need an invitation to follow the prompting to learn things that benefit you. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's where the freedom as a projector comes in. You can do that all day long. Mm -hmm. You're very, very free with that. But when it comes to impacting other people, when it, like transforming their lives, when it's for the other, that's when it needs to have the invitation. So it's invitations to big things, relationships with other people, moving, like moving because you're moving into a different community, which is going to impact the community. It'll impact your life, but it impacts the other people around you. So you're looking at where's that invitation where you can come in and guide and lead other people around you that feels really good. Mm -hmm. So it's the edu like you diving into the education that you know you need to dive into. Mm -hmm. That's like source invitation, like go this way. You're like, yes, mm -hmm. I like that one. That one lights me up. So and then we can look at it from, I know we have a lot of generators on the call. There's nuances to this because as a projector, it's waiting to respond in a different way, but it's waiting to respond to the invitation. Mm -hmm. Whereas with a generator, the universe is always bringing things to you. Like every moment, the universe is always bringing things to you to respond to. And it's your guideposts with this. Invitations for projectors take longer. It's not a moment by moment thing. So generators, God, you guys got it a lot easier <laughs> on that regard. Um, but it's a little less, so there, I talked about the freedom with projectors to just like go with the inspiration and like that lights me up. That's what I want to learn about. That's where I'm want to dive into because projectors are here to hold really deep wells of information. Whereas with, you as a generator, you're here to master your craft and respond to what is coming to you from your outer reality, like setting the intention of like, this is what feels good. I want to create this in my life and then following what's coming to you. There's a, there's a difference and a nuance and it's the, it's how your aura is attracting things to you that creates the difference. Is that helpful? Mm hmm okay <laughs> okay can you tell us like in relation to the game so the way that i designed this game is it's for you it's for you so when we're looking at um knowing that that's the point natalie thinking of all the different um types or designs when they are inspired and they're ready to put up their phone to, to record themselves every day. When it's for themselves, does that match? Or does it, does for some people do, does it need to be a thought for somebody else? So let's, let's refine that a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. So Bron, when you as a projector, you got the divine download inspiration to create the game for everyone. Mm -hmm. And then you can come to the table saying, Hey, I have this idea to create a game. Do you guys want to play? Mm -hmm. And then everyone can respond, uh-huh, uh-uh, right. from the gut. Well, if people yeah. respond with, uh-huh, if you guys are generators and manifesting generators, which you are, especially 
actually with the splenic or the sacral authority, not the emotional. I know Pam and Kalei have emotional, so you guys need to like write it out a little bit. But you get that, uh huh. Your sacral motor is responding, it's turning on, and you now have the energy to go do that. That's the response. Uh huh. Kalei and Pam, you're like, it's an uh huh, but I need to sleep on it. And then you'll wake up maybe the next morning and you're like, oh, I have clarity on like what that means and what that looks like and how I'm going to do that. And, or I need a little bit more clarity. Let me ask some questions. It, it's, it's this part of that process with it. Um, <laughs> and Pam's laughing. So that got me giggling. I, I'm forever the question asker. It's like, <laughs> I just need some more details. So anyway, go ahead. And it's getting clarity. It's working through the emotional side of things because emotions are like, you have a wave that you're going through. It's a process to get to the clarity, you know? So that's your process. But boy, once you're clear, you have very creative potential energy to go and do and create this thing. I have yet to come to love that emotional wave. Mm. <laughs> I'm kind of like being pulled through it. <laughs> so, yes, and it's always going. And you're always in an emotional wave about something. Is that and you awesome? probably have multiple waves happening all the time with different decision-making points. Um, and that can cause a lot of confusion in, in your brain and in your system. But when you get to that clarity piece, the confusion goes away. And you're clear about the thing. And that's when the motor really, your motor for the emotional piece kicks in because it's a creative energy. It's like, oh, now I have clarity. I know exactly what I'm going to create and go do. You know, but you are, when you're clear, you're also waiting because you have that generator piece. You need to wait to respond. Okay, I'm clear. I'm ready to create. And then you wait to respond and let the universe tell you when it's go time. I mean, it's like, I have this creative energy to do this and the universe and Pam, I'll use you as an example. It can be like, as you're getting clarity, you have your kitchen cleaning stuff. You may go to bed tonight, not knowing what you're going to talk about tomorrow. But if you're in your, yes, you're clear and you have emotional energy around it. Then you wake up the next day and you may automatically pop in with this idea of like, I know exactly what's going to happen, or it may need to like pop up. All of a sudden you see a, an advertisement for pine salt or something. You're like, Oh no, don't use that. This is how you would create. And this is how you would mop your floors without pine salt. And you're like, Oh, that's my video for the day. Like it's these cues from the universe is like popping up. Do you want to talk about this? Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, that one. So it's this ever evolving clarity that happens for you, which it just, as you follow it, becomes really fun to be like, okay, what am I going to do next? <laughs> Where is this piece going to go? Or you may all of a sudden have the clarity of knowing exactly what you're going to do for the 21 days. You write it down, you create your plan and that's it. And you know yep. what you're going to do. You know, it, it comes in different ways. Hate to hog it, but it was interesting. <clears throat> a couple of years ago, my daughter was getting married, and we had her bridal shower. And I knew I had to do a little talk. Mm. And I was in the week one week countdown, and it's like, okay, what am I going to say? She's so precious to me. I need to say something, and nothing was coming. Nothing. It was the night before, and I'm like. Am I going to talk about? And when I have a talk like that, I do need to pre-think it. I can't wing it. And all of a sudden, late that night, it came to me, and the whole story came together. Boom, 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 boom. And it, I felt like it was pretty wonderful. We had the whole group crying by the time we were done. But it, it was that panic time of it's. I don't have anything yet. Yeah. <laughs> But creativity works in mysterious ways sometimes, but when you know you have that emotional wave and you're designed to emotionally connect with people, that takes some time for you to wade through, which is fine. That's, it's part of your process. And you, the more that you notice 
that you're in a process, like it, that you're in the wave, that you are mulling things over, the more you'll actually see a pattern with it. Like, oh, I'm in, I'm in this part of my emotional wave. Some people, it's like clockwork. I have a friend who is an emotional manifesting generator like you, and she, her emotional wave takes about two hours. Like clockwork. Every time. So she knows, okay, I gotta wait, give me a couple hours and I'll have the answer for you. So you can start to notice. So sometimes bigger decisions take longer to work through the wave. So smaller decisions, it may be an hour. Like it's just, you just need that buffer time because there's no decision in the now for you. It just, clarity comes over time. But can and we, that's okay, so it's just creating that buffer. Yeah, so knowing that, can we talk about the resistance that you have to accepting that part of you? Because we're, <clears throat> Natalie says this all the time, she says we're conditioned to be, we're trained to be manifestors. Forward, 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 push, 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 out, 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 do, do, do. And we have a tendency to judge ourselves as good enough or not good enough based on those standards. Does that feel like it's accurate? Mm -hmm. I, I do think so. You know, I, I, yeah, it is like, why does this take me so long? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> why doesn't this take shape? Yeah. In a, in a sales training in a little bit of a sales training that I was part of um, over the last week, there was, a mention of something that I know is erroneous that if you can't get somebody to make a decision right now in the moment then you've lost them mm. I know that's not true because I know that I'm dealing with some emotional inner authority now and I need to respect that if they are an emotional inner authority which I don't know how to tell in a sales call that's not really going to address that but I need to respect that if they are then it's okay for them to take a day to sleep on it. And I ask, do you need to sleep on it? And they go, yes, thank you. And they feel that respect. They feel respected, right? Instead of dishonored with a Grant Cardone push forward and make you buy right now or you're out, right? So when, when you think of you and accepting you and respecting yourself, respecting your own process, as I say this, do you feel a little less resistant? Like, yeah. It's okay to well, and, and I think what we're talking over today just helps me to realize that I can just look at what I'm going through and look at the pattern over time and start figuring out, okay, okay, I, I don't have to beat myself up that I can't decide this today. And I think right now my sleep on it sometimes can be a couple of weeks. I mean, it takes, or months. Sometimes it takes a long time. And that's when I get impatient with myself. My husband is an emotional manifesting generator also. And we have done this several times. The last significant time it happened was he takes a long time to decide what car he's going to get next. Mm. <laughs> and I say that because then it is months of me listening to all the back and forth. Maybe I'll get this one, or maybe I'll get this one because of these features. I like these features. Um, I don't like these features. And I'm like, oh my God. And so if he's gone into an emotional wave about car buying decision, I just look at him. I'm like, I'm going to have to listen to you for the next couple months while you decide this, huh? And he's like, Yep. Brace yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and so he was looking for a fuel. Or, so I'll tell you like this. It's kind of a funny nuance thing. Um, he ended up hating the vehicle that he had. He sold it back to the dealership. Um, it wasn't, um, it wasn't working right. So he gave it back to him or sold it back to him. And then it took him five months to decide what he wanted his next vehicle to be which meant he did not have a vehicle for five months and I drove him around everywhere. <laughs> it wasn't that big of a deal. We usually go everywhere. Anyways, um, I would just make a joke out of it because it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but 
My husband is designed the same way. And as somebody who likes to make fast decisions right now in the moment, whew, well, like I, I can give you a context story, but it took him that five months to go through his emotional wave and figure out which one he really wanted. And then when he figured out which one he really wanted, that's when he went and he went down to the dealership. He test drove one. He knew exactly what he was looking for. He wanted a used one. He wanted these particular features on it. They didn't have it on the car lot, but guess what showed up magically the next day? Mm. Exact one that he requested. <laughs> and that's the one he bought. Okay. So these things can happen really fast. And so for me, I don't have that emotional wave that I need to work through. But when I got the car that I have now, I have a little Mini Cooper. I freaking love this thing. I've had it for four, four years, five years. So I think five years. And it's a 2016 now. I bought it brand new. And I have never wavered from this. This is the car that I just absolutely love. And so my decision-making process is I went back and I was like, okay, so I know that I don't like the car that I have now. When it's time to get a new car, what do I actually want? And that's where my inner authority comes from is what do I want? And it's like, okay, so I went back through the cars that I've had and I was like, are there any cars that I miss or regret getting rid of or anything like that? Like what kind of features, what feeling do I want in a car? And I realized that the only car that I ever actually missed was this little convertible Mini Cooper that we had for like a month. And, but I loved that thing. And I was like, I want, I want a Mini Cooper. And so I expressed that to Lee and I was like, hey, so when it's time to trade in my car, I, I want a Mini Cooper again. And he goes, oh, cool. Let's go to the dealership tomorrow and see what they have. And I was like, that was fast. Okay. And, and then we happened to be across town at the time and went to a little grocery store, parked next to a Mini Cooper. On the drive home, followed three Mini Coopers back to the house. And I just looked at him like, this is going to turn out really fast, isn't it? He's like, yeah. So like the universe started like con throwing confirmations at me. And then we go to the, the Mini Cooper dealership the next day. And I had very specific things that I wanted. I wanted a blue car, hopefully with the white top. I love, I loved that Mini Cooper look with the white top. Um, I wanted a little bit bigger of a vehicle um, to where it was a bit more practical and not this tiny little box car. <laughs> so I know they had different kinds, but I didn't know what it really looked like. I just knew that I had this particular feel. Um, and so there were just particular things that I wanted with it and ended up finding the style that I really love with it. Um, I didn't like the outside, but I sat in it and I was like, oh, oh, this is my car. I, this is the feeling that I'm going for. And then I liked the outside. I didn't like it at first, but when I got out, I liked it. And turns out that they didn't have the exact vehicle that I was looking for in on the lot when he pulled up the list of all the vehicles that they had. But me, trusting in the universe, I was like, that's okay. I'll wait. And... I waited for five minutes and he pulled the list again on the computer and guess what had just came off the truck at a overflow lot down the street. My exact car I was looking for, except the white top, <laughs> but it also came with additional features that the dealership didn't even know were features available to on these mini Coopers. And I was like, Oh yeah, <laughs> that too. <laughs> and so Stuff like that when you're following your strategy and authority. So I had, as a projector, I had mentioned, and so in the story, I had mentioned to my husband that, hey, when it's time, this is what I would like. I was expressing what it is that I wanted. I was clear on what I wanted. And then he invited me to go to the dealership the next day. Complete open invitation. It flowed and clicked into place beautifully. And so you can look at the two different stories, emotional inner authority, and I have the ego, which is all about wanting, how it clicks into place when it's really clear. They're similar, but their nuances are different on how they work for you. So was that fun to hear about? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> no, how it works with your design and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, in sacral, you would just be like, uh-huh, that's the kind of car I want. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then you start, so that's the clear uh-huh. And then you start looking for cues from the universe that it's time and time will start to speed up. Like for me, it was all of a sudden I saw three Mini Coopers on my half hour drive back home, which I was like, they're, now they're everywhere. And so it'll start to, as you're focused on that, they start to pop up more and you will know the signs all of a sudden, like it speeds up and it becomes more focused. And you're like, uh-huh, and now it's time. Okay, go. And it may be an advertisement. Hey, this car, you're like, how did you know, Facebook, that I wanted that car? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd like to address this thing. Like, she knew what she wanted. She sent the ask. How many of you, and if you're watching this recording, just leave us a comment. Just say yes, that's me. Have a hard time letting yourself want a thing. Chase it off. Yeah. Cole. Yeah, me too. Like I, I worked that too. That was Blair, are you hard. going to unmute yourself so you can say something? I thought that's what you were doing. I'm like, what are you doing? I was trying. Mouse doesn't want to work. Um, yeah, that's totally me. I mean, it's like, I think I want it, but then it doesn't happen. So then I go, oh, maybe I'm on the wrong path. Um, or I've made the wrong decision. So then I try to rethink it all instead of just moving forward and remember that it's the small and simple things that get me to where I need to be. But sometimes I get tired of the, it not being here right now. Mm -hmm. Can we talk just a little bit? We have <clears throat> just a little over 15 minutes left before we end this call. And I think if we talk about what we want and what's in the way of letting ourselves want, and I don't want to say the word want, let's talk, let's use the word desire. What do you desire? And most of us are Christian and most of us have been fed this idea that we could want the wrong thing and be naughty. And I want to speak to that because I've learned that just getting to know myself and accept who I am. I have never wanted a naughty thing in my whole life. Naughty things are mean to other people. They're, you know, they're dark. They're not good. And I look at myself and examine how much I've spun in doubt and not allowed myself to want or to desire something that's perfectly good just because I was judging myself, I was programmed to think that if I take care of me, I'm selfish. And that's a lie. When we take care of ourselves, I, this is my butterfly process, it's the whole point. When we take care of ourselves and do the thing that we feel to do next, we are literally planting seeds. We're sending out ripples and they do impact and, and help other people, even if we never know about it. The butterfly just needs to go take the next drink, gets pollen all over its feet, goes to the next flower, and does magic that it doesn't even know it's doing. It's just taking care of its next step. If we're doing that, we can start paying attention. We can start seeing how many flowers grow because of what we're doing. Or we can just remember that we need to take care of ourselves, and having a desire is a good thing. So what's the desire of your heart? And, you know, who has one that they'd like to share that they've been resisting wanting or desiring because oh, what if I'm wanting the wrong thing and God doesn't want that for me? Anybody have something? Do you have something, Sharon? Let me unmute you, babe. I'll do it. Oh, you got it. Okay. Um, well, this, this is really interesting because um, I have, I've done a lot of things to raise, to help children and stuff, and it's impacted my home. And, uh, and I have suppressed because, yeah, 
it maybe seemed um, selfish or uh, something I didn't need or but my my carpets my my home has just really felt having an, a whole new load of children here mm -hmm. uh, and anyway and so I I have suppressed it and I've been doing some energy work of not an, and it's helped me to get to the point that I'm willing to face things and face the the walls that need help the the um, floors that need help and that kind of thing and um, I have a great desire to have people come and and um, share their uh, experiences with them. We're in a situation now with the COVID that we can't um, we can't use our church buildings for um, single adults, which I'm on. Mm -hmm. And so, and there's very few people that have a home big enough to to have people in their home. Mm -hmm. And I'm embarrassed about mine because it, it, it needs repair. And so one of the reasons that I have been negligent in the game is that I've been going through a process of, of uh, getting to the point that, that this is a, a is not naughty, as the word you use. Right, yeah. I oh. No, and so uh, I've been looking at flooring. I have been doing a lot of that kind of thing, and and it's taking quite a process because I wanted it's a big investment, and I wanted to do it right. And uh, so anyway, and so mine is floor, <laughs> mine is, but like you say that you don't know, but in the back of my mind and when you were talking about this in the back of my mind, the whole thing is, okay, so I can have people here. And, and when we bought this home, or when we were talking about buying this home, the words kept coming to my mind, this was to be a gathering place. And it hasn't been for the past few years because, because, I don't know why, probably the negative of what, what I'm feeling even. And so I'm, I'm grateful for you to, to mention this because I, I struggle with guilt and shame over, because I have family that need money to do other things. And here I am using this money frivol frivolously. No. I, it's not, you butterfly. know. You're a butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You never know how, if you follow that thing, that feeling that, that you need to do next, you never know how it's going to impact your family that you think <laughs> you're taking care of by not taking care of yourself. <laughs> you never know, right? You do right. It. Just, what everybody else judges, it, it can't matter. Mm -hmm. and, and none their business, not any. And nobody knows the feelings that I have of struggling with. And I wouldn't even allow myself to, to, to know the extent of it, of walking on hall carpets that, that are so worn and, and stuff. And I just think, and, and that's what I was going to do. I was going to do just the hall, just the hall. And then I had a daughter, mom, look at, don't do it piecemeal. Don't do it. Get it done. Mm -hmm. Do it, you know. And, and so it's moved into this small project of just a hall and paint around the hall to a living room and a dining room and a family room. And I'm just like, oh, my goodness. And so much more work. And yet... I will be so much more pleased with, with, uh, with it in the end. 
Yeah, so, you know what colors, you know what kind of carpet you're getting. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to do a vinyl plank oh, and, lovely. and I, and I'm going to do it throughout mm -hmm. and on a landing even, I mean, and then carpet on my stairs. So yeah, and I, I have actually picked it out now. It's, it was ordered yesterday and I'm just Yay. like, okay. And, and, but do be doing big purchases really freaks me out. But anyway, I'm. Okay. You got this butterfly. Sharon, can I offer you a little bit of reframe on this? Yes, please. Okay. So I'm looking at your human design chart as you're talking through all of this. And I see how life has affected you and not being able to take care of yourself, which is actually what you need for grounding. You need to be able oh. to take care of yourself first. Okay. Because by nurturing and caring for yourself first, you will then be able to care and nurture for others in a very, very strong, impactful way. This is, it's part of how you actually need to take care of yourself first so that you can ground it's in your design earth, by the way. So it's like it's very important for you to be able to have this as your grounding so you can reach your potential. Oh, wow. Okay. And okay. you also have very, very strong queen energy in your chart. There is a channel for king and queen or a gate for king and queen energy. And you have it um, one, two, three times, which is super strong in your chart. And what that is, is it's a, this is a tribal energy of you taking care of the tribe, but you are the queen of this. And so if you have gotten your house and you want it to be a gathering space and it hasn't been a gathering space for a couple of years and you are the queen of this space, you actually need to be a little bit selfish to get the space the way that you want it so you can open up your home again to have it be a gathering space again and you can be the queen of your home and everybody can come because you've cared and nurtured for yourself and your house you can then care and nurture for everyone who enters into the house the way that you are designed and the way that you want it to happen wow okay okay yes that is very helpful i'm sorry i'm having technical difficulties and i don't want to push a button for fear i'll lose you all together but anyway, <laughs> I, I was running out of battery, so I had to plug it in. And when I plugged it in, uh, my technical nightmares happened. So anyway, <laughs> but that really makes sense to me. I mean, uh, it makes sense to me in a, an emotional way of, um, that I have felt, oh, I, it, it answers so many questions. I have felt so isolated in a, in a sense and so not productive with other people and doing the relationships that I love to do, having relationships that I love to have. And it's not been the same since. And so that answers so many questions. Thank you, Natalie. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Pam, did you have something? Are else? you there? Oh, I, okay. I, I think I have some of those same things as Sharon. I remember looking at the fears and all of that. And floors were a big thing in my house. It, we had just worn the carpet down to the ground. And I was embarrassed. And I didn't want to have people over and everything else. And a couple of years ago, we got the vinyl planking throughout most of the house. And it just set my heart up. It just felt good. I mean, we got rid of a lot of little things, you know, because I wanted just to see my corners and I wanted to see all of that. And I do feel a lot more able to gather people. And in fact, we did it just last week with some teacher friends who came through their rough first week. And I just, not everything's perfect in the home, but that just felt to me like now I can have people over and be civil. <laughs> 
How to take care of yourself. Sharon. Yeah, Sharon, go for it. Thank you. Uh, touch to Zoom. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. Okay, yeah, I'm back. I pressed the right button or I would have been gone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Bronwyn, as well. You're welcome. Cole says, start, think, ask, receive, trust. Trust. I don't know. And then it's supposed to say, this has really helped me with making decisions, but somehow the decisions jumped up by trust. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> And, yeah. and Colet, that there's a you have a thinking you have thinking in there. So we're actually not designed to make decisions from our mind. You're designed to make the decision from your inner authority. So the emo when you get emotional clarity, your emotional clarity will trigger thoughts in your mind, and you'll get the aha moments of like, oh, that's what it is. But you're not like thinking through this and I got to rationalize it and like really like analyze this and figure it out. It's not, it's not here. It's a, Oh, I've been going through this wave. I've noticed the thoughts that I've had around the emotion, but I'm not clear on what that is. But when the emotion becomes clear, then your brain becomes clear, but it's not your brain becomes clear. And then your emotions become clear. It's your emotions are clear and then it clears up your brain space and you're like oh that's what it is that's my decision that feels good i have creative juices flowing around that and i can move forward it doesn't mean that our brain is irrelevant or that we can't think things through because you can but your decisions come from the body mm -hmm. because in for a generator like um like sharon's a sacral authority generator she may get an uh-huh for something. Her brain's like, what? Just happened to my brain. <laughs> like, that's not rational. I don't think that that should be the decision of all that. I'm going to override this. And then your, your gut's like, uh-uh. It's this. And your gut's like, uh-huh, that. Your brain's like, but that doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to make sense. But when your brain sinks up and be like, oh, that's what my body has energy to do. The universe is bringing me in that direction. That's my aha. Uh -huh. Then the brain can go, oh, wait, I took a class on that. I know how to do that. Or maybe I don't have all the information for that, but I know I'm supposed to go in that direction. So I'm going to trust that source is going to bring me the next steps as I move along that path. I love that. So I'm really guilty of being the overthinker. Oh, but if I do that, then what will happen? Oh, I see wow. Pam nodding. <laughs> it's, it's a thing. I like <laughs> but it's, and that's why I say this in this way. Of, the brain will try to be in charge and override everything. It's brilliant. You are able to hold so much amazing things in the brain but it's here to execute out what the decision is. I like to think of it this way. You are you and you wear your body and your body is your tool. And it's really um, what I like to think of it this way. When I think of when we're learning about our inner authority, it's the interpreter of what is in alignment with our higher self. Our higher self is the piece of us that's so connected it is who we are, but we have to teach our body or allow our body to sync up with who we really are. And then, and our brain is, or our mind, well, we're so easily suggestible, right? So we have all of other people's visions and all the bull crap in our eyes. And we have to move that out of the way and allow ourselves to feel through it. And that makes sense to me. It's, it doesn't, it didn't before I cleaned, I started cleaning house with all the breakthrough and allowing that, like, let's stop being resistant about this thing that I feel right now is the thing to do right now because blah, 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 blah. What about all of this? It doesn't matter. Make the move. You know what I mean? And so 
And, and that's why, and that's how I see it. Well, my, that's in alignment with my higher self. I can feel that in my body. But my head, my head will sometimes um, create that negative emotional response. And then there's this going on. But what do I know about the negative emotional response? It just means I need to get the thing that that's the resistance out of my way so that I can flow. Does that make sense? Does that feel like really clear? Yeah, and your your brain really likes to tell stories. So then it can become really entertaining to see what story your brain is trying to tell. You're like, oh, I, I see you making stuff up up there. <laughs> or even stuff we're used to just in our society, in our culture. Nothing to do with being in alignment with who you are. <laughs> so, all right. Well, thank you all so much for coming. This was an amazing discussion. I'm really excited to post this. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. Let us know if you have something that you would like to talk, to, talk about next in the game. You can leave that in the comments. I will be checking those, and then we can maybe have that discussion next time if you want to join us. Make sure you go to giveyourgiftsselyourskills.com forward slash resources. And we will, we're going to be starting to make sure that you have a link to come and join us if you're playing the game when you go through there. So we can send you that email to let you know how to join us every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Mountain Time. All right. I love you, ladies. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Thank you. Bye.